that one to me kind of solidified that I number one want to play acoustic guitar that I wanted to be a songwriter and I wanted to be a singer songwriter for the first time Hey everybody, we are The Script and this is our five essential tracks. Um, yeah, I'll go with a song that we actually covered when we came out first. It was a song by David Bowie, Heroes. Um, I love that song because traditionally um, it's got a very traditional, uh, um, I suppose, uh, setup as far as how the song uh, form it goes all the way down. But uh, how each instrument starts to get introduced to it, it's really subtly difficult. And it's one of those things from all the counter melodies that hit in the song. As a musician, it's very, very interesting to hear all those counter melodies go off because I'm not sure anybody would get away with that nowadays. And it's something we often uh, repeat in our music. We often layer in, in our songs, we layer songs and different counter melodies. And uh, often they're lost because no one hears these little cool little things. But that's one song I love. The message is great. And of course, what a great artist, David Bowie. Track number two, um, I'm going to go with a very influential one to me, probably just personally me, um, was a track uh, by a guy called James Taylor, he's an American singer-songwriter, um, this track called Fire and Rain, which lyrically really stunned me as a child and I never really realised why until I was older, you know, it's really strange how you can get the meaning and emotion from a song but not really understand what the singer's singing about and that one to me kind of solidified that I, number one, want to play acoustic guitar that I wanted to be a songwriter and I wanted to be a singer-songwriter. I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again like at the time growing up there was nine people living in my house you know so everybody was playing different stuff my father probably would have played it but I actually remember my just my one older sister Andrea um, the, sorry the closest to me um, she was a James uh, James uh, Taylor fanatic so she, I kind of vicariously heard it through the wall and then just obviously owned it as mine you know it's a, be it's a beautiful song like I said and but you can feel that emotion I felt that emotion as a kid when I was listening to it but it was a uh, beautiful Number three for me would be um, U2, where the streets have no name. I remember the first time I saw this video, um, it just blew me away. The fact that there was a band from Ireland, in America, in Los Angeles, on the rooftop, stopping traffic with police coming down and all. I just thought, this is unbelievable that this can be done by an Irish band, you know, and that uh, I'm Irish, maybe I can do this too. So it was probably the first time that I really realized the desire and the hunger to want to, to do the same thing, to go to America, to, you know, to tour the world, to be in a band, to go international and that it was actually possible and here are these guys actually doing it. Um, and just you know, to see the ruckus they caused with that, with that video and just for them to be that far away from home, you know, the idea that that could be done and be possible, um, it just gave me this big dream and this big idea. And then uh, the boys found me one day and I said, uh, I have an idea to share with you and, and here we are today, you know, so I think for me that's one of the most influential because um, I think you two were the first Irish band to really show that that was possible for an Irish band and for such a small country to have such a big musical presence in the world. Um, yeah, for me it really, it really gave me a dream and, and here I am living it now. You know, I can only equate Ireland and I, you know, being a band from Ireland, I was only thinking about this this morning. It's like if you took every great, great songwriter there is in the world and put them on one island. That was what Ireland was to me growing up. I think as well, we, we as a country, we don't, we as a country, even politically, they don't, we don't choose sides. Um, um, we tend to be peacekeepers. Uh, we tend to be uh, huge on the charity front. There's a lot of Irish people in Africa, for example, helping with charities and around the world, of course. Um, and I think for that reason, um, and we invented alcohol, so I think we should yeah. be 
So we, I we think won't that's fight you. We get you thing. drunk, and then we we'll we'll get take you over. drunk. We like to hang out. That's how we, we do like it. to play music. <laughs> So I think we, we celebrate that every year on Paddy's Day. I fight you, but you have to drink with me first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, track number four for me, um, I, I, I've loved hip-hop all my life and um, purely because of its lyrical content. But I think, and I've gone through so many uh, inspirational um, hip-hop artists, but I think when, when Eminem came along, I think he, he he broke a new mold. When he goes back to this mobile home, that's when it's back to the lab again, yo. This old rap city better go capture this moment and hope it don't do it. Lose it's out in the music, the moment you own it, you better never let it go. You only get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime, do it. As, uh, he was able to take very, very clever lyrics and really use rhyme um, and, and I suppose attitude and tone so well. Not many people could have a tone where they could be relaxed in a rap and then get really mad in a rap and sound and, and it comes across in there and still be articulate. And um, he, he has a song called Lose Yourself. Uh, another song that actually we covered, we done the live lounge with um, very earlier on in our career. Um, it's a wonderful song uh, and again, the song at the end of the day is a motivational, inspirational song coming from a guy who's had a very dark background. That's the stuff that I think real artists are all about, so I'll choose that song. Yeah, no, I'm going to go back to the very search because, you know, although it's not somebody else's track, it was a track that changed it for us. It was, um, you know, it was a track that came out at the time when we were all broke-ass musicians sitting on people's couches and, you know, going from couch surfing, as we call it, going from one place to another. and. I think this song, you know, it introduced us to the world really. It was a song, it was our very first single, it was a song called We Cry. Not saying that it was one of our best songs, but it was definitely our introduction to the world, you know, on the stage and the, the, the power of that song. And when it first came out, our lives have never been the same since. Never been the same since. So um, I'll say We Cry, you know, just a little. So now you can, because we've been around 10 years, right now you can actually go back 10 years and watch this next video and see how much we've aged. <laughs> played in New York, we've done the David Letterman show, we've done, you know, played Central Park. Like what? Who gets to play Central Park? Do you know what I mean? I remember growing up watching like, you know, like the likes of U2s and the like Garrett Brooks jamming Central Park out and there we were a few years later. So it's been an amazing journey, one that we can only thank the fans for as well and long may it continue. Thank you very much for listening to our five essential tracks. Uh, please join in the conversation. If you want to join in, just leave a, a click below here or above, or here, wherever you or look. Below. Or just swipe. Or so turn your computer on upside up, down and you <laughs> might get that. Sorry, you won't. You get, you get that.